Okay, it's time to put shock in the pool. Now there's several ways you can do this. I'm going to first explain how you should do it, and then explain why you are seeing the image you are seeing. What you're supposed to do if you use granular shock, which is what I use, is mix that into a bucket or a pail of water and broadcast that around the perimeter of the pool. I find that when that happens, the chlorine shock simply does not want to dissolve into the water fully. And then when you get to the end of it, you still end up with a bunch of granules at the bottom and you don't want to dump that in the pool but as you pour you never really know when that's going to start pouring in and not so then you got to refill with water and it just ends up being a total pain so this is the way i do it don't do it this way unless you're a trained idiot like i am what i'm going to do is add it to the skimmer you'll notice that the pool is on recirculate Always have the pool on recirculate when you do this. If you have any sort of heater, I have solar. You'll see it right there. That's currently on. I want to shut that just to ensure that we don't get any of the super chlorinated water up there. So we'll let that shut itself and then we'll go over to the skimmer. This is the shock that I use. It's a granular shock. I don't know what the percentages are in that. I just get it in bulk and, you know, go from there. Whatever's cheapest, right? I think this is a one pound scoop, I'm not sure. But if you're sure, and you want to do it this way, you want to sprinkle it in very slowly, as you see. Now what this is doing, as opposed to the bucket method, is the water, which hopefully you can see, is rushing around like mad. And by the time it goes through all the pipes to the pump, and then all the return pipes back to the pool, I would say it's 99% dissolved, if not fully dissolved. But you want to go slow. So just keep going like this and keep putting it in. If you go too fast, it'll end up at the bottom of your skimmer and could degrade the plastic in it. So you do want to be careful about that. So you always want to go slow. You can split this up amongst your other skimmers if you'd like, you don't have to. I usually just put it in this one. I have a lump in this one, but that's just gonna have to be, oh, more than one lump. Don't let any of this splash on you. It will bleach out. Well, I got more than one lump. I got like three now. Also a good idea, once you get that in, if you're not afraid to touch it, is to lift up your basket. And the lumps that were in there, you can no longer see. They have dissolved already. There's one left and that's gone now. Also a good idea is to go in and reach down in your skimmer and make sure there's no shock left. There's only a little bit here. I like to go ahead and swirl that around just to ensure that nothing sits there. There's another little divot in the skimmer here. I don't know what it's for, but that also collects some shock. So I just stirred that up and that's all good. And now with that all done, the pool has been shocked. Now you want to let that shock circulate for some time. First of all, how much shock is dependent upon your pool and how big it is, how many gallons. That's something you got to look up. There's no hard and fast rule. This is what works for me, just doing one scoop of that stuff. 
I do that once a week as well as add the chlorine tabs and really don't have any problem. So you want to let this circulate for a while with the pump on recirculate, the multi-port valve rather, on recirculate mode. If you have a heater or solar heater or anything like that, try to bypass that if at all possible to prevent the super chlorinated water from going through those pipes. At this point, everything has returned back to the pool that I dumped in. And if there were anything, it would be over at that end where the water comes in. There never is, so I'm not even going to bother to show you. This is what works for me. Like I said, it is not the prescribed method. You should not do this. You should go the bucket route. But like I said, if you're sure of what you're doing, this method can save you a lot of time. How long you let this circulate is up to you. Some people say 24 hours. Leave the pump running for that whole time. For me, because I'm opening it up, I'd say after about an hour or so, I'm probably going to go ahead and get the filter ready. And that will be the next part.